Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to show you how you can totally customize your blog design in Squarespace 7.0 no matter which template you're using. So you're working on your website, but you're not really loving the design of your blog page. Depending on which version of Squarespace you're on or what template you've chosen, the blog design can be pretty limited. So there are two main versions of Squarespace right now, 7.0 and 7.1. And in Squarespace 7.1, there are a ton of new and great blog design features. But in Squarespace 7.0, depending on which template you're using, the blog design can be super limited. So today we're talking about changing up the blog design in Squarespace 7.0 specifically. You can use this method in Squarespace 7.1 too, but you probably won't need to. If you're not sure which version of Squarespace you're using or what template you're using, I've linked a guide down below. So check that out first and then let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so like I mentioned, we're gonna be using Squarespace 7.0 for this tutorial. And I'm currently in a Brine-based template. I usually recommend the Brine template to people using Squarespace 7.0 because it does have the most design customizations out of all of the other templates. But even though it does have the most customizations, it still can be pretty limiting when it comes to blog design. So no matter which Squarespace 7.0 template you are using, if you're having issues with design your blog and getting it to look the way you want it to look then this tutorial will be helpful for you so I'm just gonna open up the blog and the first thing you'll want to look at is all of your design settings to do with the blog so make sure you open up your blog and then head back into your main menu click on design and then site styles so no matter what template you're using you're going to have a bunch of blog design settings in this panel you do have to be on the blog page for them to show, so that's a little bit confusing, but you have to make sure the actual page is open before they'll show up here in the design settings panel. And then you just wanna scroll down until you find your blog settings. So you'll notice they'll say blog on them. So we have some metadata, list, typography and color settings for this main blog page. And then for the next level of settings, you'll want to click out of the design menu and then click into one of your posts. Then once you're in an actual post, you'll find more settings under the site styles. So you just do the exact same thing, open up a post, scroll down and look for those blog settings. And some of the same ones will be there, but there also will be some new settings to look at. So before you go customizing your blog using the method I'm about to teach you, it's important that you have actually looked through all of the settings that are available to you. Because if you can fix your issues with just a couple of settings, that's gonna be a lot easier than what I'm about to show you. Another area where it might be worth looking to before you get into this method is going into pages and opening up your blog page settings. So you just click on this cog here, which will open up your blog settings. There's a couple things in here that will actually alter your design a little bit. I don't know why they're in here really, but they are. So <laughs> if you scroll down to the bottom of general, you can update how many posts display per page. So this is kind of like a design feature that you might want to tweak depending on your design. And then if you click on advanced post display, you'll actually choose if you have an excerpt of your post on the blog page or the full post displayed. So that's another design tweak that will make a huge difference to what your blog looks like. Okay, so now that we've just looked through the site styles and the blog page settings, and you're still not happy with the way your blog looks, I'm gonna show you a way to make a really comprehensive blog layout. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually add a new page. And this new page is going to be our new blog page. So you can add this into your primary navigation or wherever you want to. And depending on your template, you can either just use a regular blank page, or if you are using a template that has index pages, you could also use an index page, which is really cool. So I'm gonna use an index page because it's a little bit more advanced, and then I can show you what's possible. But you can also just use a regular page and create a pretty similar design. I'm gonna call this blog and this is going to be my new blog page. So now we should have two blogs. One is just a page and one is the actual blog. So this page blog is actually going to be our main blog page. And we're gonna take the original actual blog collection page and we're gonna put that down into our not linked section. Then I'm gonna open up the settings of this blog page and I'm gonna call it something like 
blog post archive. And this is essentially where all of our blog posts are going to be. So I'm going to save that. And I'm just going to leave that there for now. It's just it's basic grid blog, just like that. And then we'll come back up to the page we're going to create. I'm just going to add a couple of sections to this page because it is an index page. If you have no idea what that means, don't worry too much about it. You can just add a regular page. But essentially an index page on Squarespace 7.0 is just a way to create a page that has different sections. The objective of this is that we have this really comprehensive blog page that people land on when they click on our blog. And we are going to display posts on this page. But at the end of the day, all of our posts are going to be in the blog post archive. This is where we're going to add blog posts. This is where all of our posts are going to be. And then this is just going to sort of be like the front page of our blog. I just want to show you quickly as well some examples of what we can achieve using this method. This is Paige Brunton. She's a Squarespace and website design business expert and she has a very busy blog, lots and lots of posts. So she's used this method to organize her blog a bit better and add more content to it. So you can say she has this nice banner at the top. Then she has a bar with different blog categories. Then she has this next section for popular posts. And then her posts underneath are all sectioned by their date. So this is the most recent October 2021. And then September 2021. So it's organized really neatly by the date. And then of course you can go through and click on the categories too if you wanted to look at those. Because when you click on one of the categories, let's click on online business, you'll see that it actually opens up her main blog, which is just a grid of all of her posts and it has every single one of her posts on it. So she's using that same method. Then I'll also show you this blog by Asteria Studio, which is really, really cool. This is set up a little bit differently, but we can basically achieve this exact same thing with what we're about to do. So she has a carousel at the top with featured posts. This is like a coded type carousel, but it's totally possible within Squarespace. Then she has her category icons. She has the recent posts in different categories with the see all button. She has a shop my picks section. And then she has latest posts with category buttons again. So this is really similar to what we can achieve. You can see that this is like the front page, which she calls journal. And then if you click see all, this is where she has all of her posts posted in the back end. So this is kind of like her blog archive. So just looking through both of those designs, it will give you some ideas of what you can actually create on your blog page to just make it more enticing and comprehensive and splitting up those categories, adding opt-in freebies and really optimizing it to make it user friendly for your visitor. If you do want to do those sections, I recommend using index pages, but if you don't have index pages as an option, you'll just have to make do with a regular page. The really important element of this blog page is going to be your summary block. If you don't know what a summary block is, it's essentially just a block you can add in Squarespace. Like any other block, click on summary and it essentially will pull data from different areas of your site. In this case, we're going to want to pull data from our blog post archive. So now you'll see all of those posts that we were just looking at from the blog post archive. And this immediately opens up a ton of different opportunity for design. There's some metadata settings here. And what's really important is that you can actually filter your posts. So you can filter by category or tag. And this is how these great websites have actually organized their blog pages. So on Paige Brunton's site, she's organized by using dates. And I imagine she's just tagged each of these blog posts with the month and the year. Then on her blog page, she's pulled that tag and then it shows blog posts that have that tag. Then you can see with Asteria Studio that she has these different category sections. So these blog posts will most likely be categorized with this word here. And then she's used summary blocks to pull the specific categories. I'll link those two websites down below as well so you can go check them out live. But that is pretty much the bulk of it. You can essentially design a page however you like and then use the summary block to pull in different posts for different sections. Now you'll see on mine that the category and the tags are grayed out 
And that is just because in my blog archive, I don't have any categories or tags set on my posts. So I will quickly show you how to do that. If you click into blog post archive, and you might have some blog posts in here already or some drafts, but essentially once you've added a post, you can just open up the settings and down the bottom here, you're going to see tags and categories. So you can do either or categories. I would use for legitimate categories of your posts and then tags for anything else. For example, if you wanted to do something like page has with the dates, I would use tags for that. So you could say September 2021 as a tag. But if you want to do something like a Stereo Studio where you have different categories, I would use the categories feature for that. So let's say I want to add a category. All I need to do is click plus create category and I'm going to type in my category and click enter and that's going to save the category. You can also add as many categories as you want to and it's a little bit hard to see but you can select and unselect categories from every post. So I'm going to save that one and I'm going to open up this one click on category and choose the other category that I added and click save. So now these two posts have categories, none of the other ones do, but I can show you how we can pull that information now. So if we go back to our main blog here, click edit and you'll see the summary block right now is just showing all of the posts in my blog. But if we double click into it, click on filter items, and then now you'll see that the category filter is there because we have two categories. So you can choose multiple categories as well, which is really cool. It's very important to note the summary block will only display up to 30 items. You can't actually display every single one of your blog posts in a summary block. So it's better to keep them in categories of the most recent 30 posts or something like that. And then somewhere on this page, we're going to put a link to the blog post archive that really has every single one of your posts in it. So visitors still can visit the entire blog and every single one of your posts from this page. Now the summary block is really cool because you can click on design and there's actually four different designs to choose from. You can choose wall, which is like that wall of posts we looked at before. Actually, I'm just going to unfilter this so we can see all of the posts. And then I'll show you all of the different designs. So this is an example of a wall. It's just showing the image sizes and the exact size you uploaded them to your blog. A carousel is really cool. It's a little slider. So you can click on this arrow and it will take you back and forth through the posts. A list is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a list of your posts and a grid is pretty self-explanatory too. So once you click on one of these designs, there's also a ton of different settings for that particular design. So each one has different settings, but you can essentially toggle on images and excerpts, links, title, and adjust size and spacing. So there really is a lot you can do here with a summary block. And then of course, because this is just a regular page, you can add anything else you want too. So like in these awesome examples, we have categories and we have our freebie being promoted or a featured popular post manually added to the page. So you can just adjust anything you want on this page, which is really, really cool. If you're not sure how to link your blog categories like they both have on here, then I will link a video I recorded below all about how to do that and all of the different ways you can link your blog categories as that's something you probably will want to add to this page. And then the only other thing you really do want to add, like I mentioned before, is that read all posts link. So I recommend doing this sort of at the bottom of the page or at the bottom of a section of posts, either add some text or I'm going to click plus and add a button. And I'm going to write read all posts and we're going to link this out to our blog archive page. So click on the cog page, search through your pages for your blog post archive, save and save. 
So I know this doesn't look anything like one of the examples I showed you, but there's no point in me really sitting down and designing out a whole page. So these items are essentially all you need to create an amazing comprehensive blog design page. The summary block can be used in so many different ways and can be filtered out in so many different ways. The fact that you're using just a regular Squarespace page essentially means that you can add anything else that you want to this page. And then of course, having that button at the bottom, just so someone can go through and visit the archive if they really want to read every single one of your posts. So I know this doesn't look like much, but I'm not gonna sit here for the next two hours and design up a really amazing blog page. I just wanted to show you the main elements of what you needed so you can take those elements and run with it and design whatever you want to for your blog. So I hope you learned something from this video and I hope learning about the summary block and the way to organize these pages has really opened a lot of doors for your blog design. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.